hotter than expected inflation data, casting some doubt on the market's expectations for Fed rate cuts. I want to bring in Mohamed El Arian, who, of course, is chief economic advisor at Allianz and president of Queens College at Cambridge University. Uh, Mohamed, how much tougher is it going to be for the Fed to cut rates at this point? I think it's going to be as tough as it indicated earlier. Um, we're not going to get more than three cuts this year. And we're probably not going to start this cutting cycle until June. The market had gotten carried away. And yesterday, a relatively small miss in numbers that are very sensitive to seasonal adjustment created this outside size reaction. And it just shows you the extent to which the market had gotten carried away without much critical thinking about a very soft landing, many cuts starting early. This was, I think, just a wake-up call to people who got carried away. Uh, we, we did see markets kind of quake, at least in the instant reaction to it. Yields moved pretty significantly higher. You, you saw equities sell off. But you're still talking about the S&P 500 and the Dow down by less than 2 percent from their all-time highs. And as Joe was pointing out earlier, that, that may be a reflection of how strong earnings have been relative to expectations, too. So. Is there a way for the market to continue to climb, even if the Fed, Fed does not cut rates? Um, yes, there is a way. And it has to do with the strong economy. It has to do with earnings. And it has to do with the extent to which the U.S. is exceptional relative to other parts of the world. This is more an issue for the fixed income market than it is for the equity market. And the fixed income market has to realize three things, Becky. One is service this inflation is really hard. We're not going to get it as quickly as we need to to get to 2% um, as fast as the Fed wants to get to. Two is that there are genuine and analytical question about what is the neutral interest rates? What's the right inflation target? How okay. fast should you get there? These are serious okay. analytical questions. And then the third element is that different parts of the economy differ in how sensitive they are to interest rates. And the market has to realize, the fixed income market has to realize these three things. And I think they got it. They got the message yesterday, but they, that they overreacted because they hadn't thought about it enough beforehand. This is the scary way that recessions come about, isn't it, Mohammed? I, and I'm not saying there's any similarity to the Volcker era or anything, but to finally, to finally get it under control back then, and it's not similar, I know that, but you had to cause a recession to, to, to get it under. So it's almost like the rates didn't go up enough. This is a strong economy, as you say, relative to the rest of the world, but they may need to do more work uh, in terms of slowing that. They may have to basically cause the slowdown to get inflation where, and that's, maybe a recession would never happen if it wasn't actually caused uh, by, by central bankers trying to cool inflation. I mean, that's the risk, Joe, clearly. Um, but to be fair, and I've been very critical of the Fed, they started late, they made all sorts of forecasting mistakes. But to be fair to them, they've done what they need to do. The problem is the marketplace. The marketplace embraced last November, December, a totally unrealistic path for Fed cuts. Remember, they told us, though, Muhammad, they, 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 let, they let the market believe that with their stupid dot plots, right? Although their, their well, language no, the is plots, very different than the dot plots. Yeah, yeah the dot plots to, told us three cuts. The market, for some reason, embraced six to seven. But where they failed, and I agree with you, is on communication. Their communication has flip-flopped. It's been poor. But they, this is not a Fed issue. This is a marketplace that got carried away and is now adjusting. And the risk is, as you point out, that they may, the marketplace adjustment may pull the rug from underneath what is an exceptionally strong economy and one we should be proud of. Well, that, uh, the thing I was trying to figure out is there were a lot of sectors and a lot of people that were counting on these rate cuts to refinance, whether that be in commercial real estate, whether that be in other projects that are totally sensitive to interest rate issues and things, you know, that either need to be refinanced or you're going to lose. Um, those are the people who were really praying and, and counting on these Fed cuts coming sooner. If, if it doesn't come till June, is that the sort of thing that causes a recession when all of a sudden you have a lot of bad loans that, that can't get redone 
to some extent, or is that just going to be a situation where some people are losers and others step in and get really good deals as a result? I think it's going to be the latter. I think we have a stock problem. Undoubtedly, Becky, we have a stock problem. We have a whole host of activities that were funded at artificially low interest rates and that are today unrealistic at the valuation that the owners think they should get. And that's going to be an adjustment. And you see it in commercial real estate. That's the leading example. But there are other sectors as well. So it's a stock issue. But the good news is that there's lots of money on the sideline waiting to engage at lower valuations. So we can manage through this as long as it is not too disorderly. Um, I don't think in itself this is high recession risk. Um, where you get to a uncomfortable recession risk is when you combine the stock problem with the fact that the household buffers, this excess savings they had developed, were drawn down last year, and then add on top of that a global economy that is slowing down significantly. That is where the recession risk comes in, but I think it's less than 50%. If, if you hear things like we've heard the last couple of days, Airbnb and Expedia both saying that consumers are slowing down, they're not back into this revenge travel like they used to be, growth rates are getting back to normal levels. Will growth rates at normal levels in all areas of consumer activity be enough to continue to propel the market? It should be. I mean, we were at remarkable growth levels. F third quarter, almost 5%. Fourth quarter, 3.3%. We were an outlier compared to the rest of the world. Um, we're going to slow. Undoubtedly, we're going to slow. But I, I don't think we fall into recession unless we get some sort of disorderly financial adjustment or the Fed makes another policy mistake. There is inherent strength in this economy, and that inherent strength has carried us through some pretty difficult geopolitical and political circumstances. What would your idea of a, a Fed policy mistake be at this point? So, for example, if they remain too tight. That, that is now the policy mistake, that they are so scared in be, because they were late, because they communicated poorly, because their forecasts were wrong, that they've been so shaken up that they end up staying too tight for too long. Well, what's too and long you, if you already think a Fed cut is not coming before June? No, June is fine. But okay. if, for example, we're having this conversation in September and they haven't cut yet, then I think that will constitute a policy mistake. You, look, I've been I've been with you consistently for at least six months saying we're not going to get the sorts of rate cuts that the market had priced in, and we're not going to get it as early as March. June well, and three cuts is much it's much more realistic. Now, if the Fed delays much longer than that and doesn't come through with three cuts, then that would be the policy mistake. To wrap up Mr. Mohammed Olarian's notes, he said there will be no more than three cuts this year. He said the markets are getting carried away with rate cuts coming this soon, and so they may be disappointed. He said we can still have a good economy and stock market with cuts, or without cuts rather, but the economy will have to be exceptional, firing on all cylinders. So we'll see if we can do that. Earnings are going to have to keep going up. AI is going to have to keep making major improvements. The Fed may need to do more work and cause a slowdown. This is the big risk that we have on the table, guys. The Fed communications has been poor lately. This is not good. He's trying not to spook the markets, but in the meantime, he's not telling us too much. There are a lot of people needing refinancing even outside of the stock market. So the cuts being pushed back is stopping a lot of the of movement in the economy and in the stock market. The stock issues can be worked through because of all the money on the sidelines that need to come in. This is another thing that Mr. Mohammed Alarian said, and he gives a recession Less than 50% chance, guys. Less than 50% chance we have a recession. He said there is no recession unless the Fed makes a big policy mistake. The big policy mistake would be remaining too tight for too long. So uh, they need to make a cut this year or recession is back on the table. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.